Dania now. It's Grand Dania. The gold Logie this year. Oh my god, it's Grand Dania. And our mom, Shazzy Dania. She's really crazy. It's all true. It's all true. The podcast with Grant and Shazzy Dania. <sighs> It's a fight over the chairs today, guys. That's because you're sitting, one of those episodes. You're sitting too close to me, and then I I'm tried to move. Married to you, it doesn't matter how close I sit to you. But half <laughs> my head is blocked off the camera. And that's the way I like <laughs> it. Uh. There we go, this folks. Is, um, if you're watching on YouTube a now. First. <laughs> yep. Oh yeah, check that out. That's an angle and a half. Welcome to uh, Grant, George, and Shezzy's shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> this is the It's All True podcast. Now I'll, I'll put your frame, you back up. Uh, and if you're new to the podcast, you can also see us on YouTube. The episodes are all uploaded there. If you want the full visual impact of Shezzy and my fighting, or just my shoulder, yeah, it's going really We've well. We've never started an episode with a fight, or ever had a fight in an episode. I think this is the first time. Oh no! We would I have said some Bob, bumpy things. I've I've given Grant like the finger underneath the desk. Yeah. Like, you tell me if you can see this, so I'm going to give him now, if the I had finger said it, I like. If I'd have said that to you, that would have how how would that have sounded? Can you tell that I'm I'm sticking? A bit X-rated. I can see jolting in your arm, but that's a bit problematic. That's, I think we should just this is an, confirm what we are doing under the desk. This is an aggressive finger. Let's get your finger away from me. Poking at you. <laughs> Bloody hell. Oh, surely we, we've had episodes where we've had the shits with one another, surely. Oh, when I tell Grant not to play with his microphone. Get fucked. It's so annoying. And then it, like, flops in the middle of an Mate, interview. I don't know if you watch. Yeah, look, George is about, he's recognised it. Yep. Well, uh, no, I've recognised it, but I was just going to say, uh, is it a radio thing? Because er, like, I do it. Everyone in radio is playing with that mic, bringing exactly. it up and it down. Exactly. Maybe in TV you don't. So one of the biggest radio shows in the country is... Uh, you know, is um, God who's, in, who's on it now? <laughs> I don't know what if it would. Kate, there's so many to choose. No, from. Ricky Lee, Tim, oh, and Kate, yes. Tim, and Joel. Thank you, Kate, Kate Tim, and Joel. Yeah. No, 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 Ricky, Tim, Ricky, Kate, Ricky, Tim, and Ricky. Yeah, <laughs> so you, you got it wrong, mate. <laughs> Um, that he plays with his mic all the time, Tim. Tim Blackwell. He just constantly swinging the thing around. And look, we've got these little mics that have that, like these little movement sort of things, so you can move it without making like clang and banging noise. Yeah, but he also has a whole tech department behind him that can fix it when it's broken. I am the tech department, mate, and I'm not technological. Look, listen. listen. <laughs> what was that word? Listen, uh, I think you just had a stroke. By the way, I don't know what happened to your mouth. But my mum uh, watches what? the podcast oh, and she know. hates it when I touch the microphone stand. It really annoys her. So this really? Is for you. This is for you, Glennis. This is for you, Glennis. Well, th- isn't that interesting? Thank you. The Grammy. listeners wouldn't even hear that though. No, because we have the equipment. So let me touch it. I oh, know it's a nerve thing. You know, we've spoken about this. I have a tick, right? A concentration tick. And when I host TV shows, I also have that tick. And I've learned to hold the bottom of my jacket. I'm not wearing a jacket. <laughs> So hold I hold the bottom of the jacket so I don't fiddle my penis. You, could, <laughs> you can hold my hand. I think there's something very wrong with you. And <laughs> so this <laughs> is effectively my penis. So leave me alone. And we've got a guest That's on a today who is, who is work. <laughs> it extends. <laughs> Look at it. Look how far it goes. Meter Look at this. Look how far it goes. Oh, I'm going to put it's it near your mouth. now. <laughs> Oh, it's in your face. <laughs> Let's put it in her face. We've got a guest today. Oh, my God. We should get serious. And yeah, we should. And she, and this and is she's a professional. She's not here yet, but she is a professional and she has worked okay. with you in the past and I'm like I'm weirdly, awkwardly want to ask her if if she noticed that you have a tick at all, a nervous oh, tick. Well, no, but she I, hasn't worked with me on telly. She has. You did the voiceover for... Um, As a movie. It wasn't a TV show. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, but she, she might have noticed I had a tick. Well, that, well that's a bit was weird because then if I say to her, did you ever notice that Grant often, you know, plays with his bits? I don't play with my bits. I put my hand near my bits and I end up sort of pushing my skin, like pushing my into my hip. It looks like I'm, I'm touching my doodle, but I'm not. It just, no, you do it. I saw you doing it in the race suit. It's like that you, was. I was trying to get ready before I get in and like move the belts around and stuff. But yes, I do do it in a race suit. You're right. 
Now everybody who's listening is going to look out. Oh, do you have a nervous tick? I feel like we've done these before, but do you, George? I'm having a sense of deja vu. Yeah, yeah. I shake my leg. I shake my leg a lot. Yeah. Yes, that's See, right. Just working out that nervous energy, you, you, you have, it has to have an outlet somewhere. Otherwise, it all gets pent up inside. Do you know, I don't have a tick or a dick, um, but I've got um, this ability to, and we might have already spoken about this, I've got this ability, if I'm really tired, to fall asleep and my eyes are still open. Yep. Now, it's creepy as hell. Oh, that's creepy. Have man. I said this before? No. I don't know. It doesn't no, matter. I haven't Let's heard this one. Even if we have. I don't know if it's something that I've really ever... It's like to- it's like having a conversation with a corpse. <laughs> It's weird. It's a, a corpse that it's, talks back to you. It's not. I don't. I don't know what I look like. But all I know is that if if Grant says, "Did you just fall asleep?" and I'll be like, "Yes," and then I kind of. I used to try and cover it up. She used to say no. So, yeah. So it, that will startle me awake. I'm sure that give there's us a, some. Give us a, an example of a conversation because this, okay, this so, used to freak the hell out of me when we first started dating because I thought. What kind of weird-ass person have I fallen in love with? Yeah, so really (laughs) super tired. And I started at well, I remember, at uni because I remember talking to someone in the photocopier room and they were like, what on earth did you just say about China? I was talking about China. Often I go there. (laughs) Um, It's quite strange. But um, I was talking about something, something in China and, yeah, and this girl was like, what on earth did you just say? Now, I had... Stayed awake for two days now, to complete. You got to let everybody know that that uh, the person you were chatting to wasn't talking about ti- China. You just no. happened to. <laughs> she just falls asleep, and then kind of just a random sentence will come out of her mouth that is completely unrelated to the conversation she's currently in. Yeah, so Concerning. she she might have said something like, "Hey, you know, how are you going?" And then I just kind of fall asleep. I don't know what it looks With like. With her eyes then, open. Yeah, and I'm just like... So can you see the pupils or just the whites of the eye? Oh, no, that's a bit creepy. No, I just look normal, no, don't I? It's normal other than you can tell someone's just left the room. You know what I mean? <laughs> like you look, you're looking in their eye. The eye looks the same, but it's like the lights have gone out inside. There might be an actual mental condition for this. Yeah, it's called so your mental. Let us that's know. That's the mental condition. <laughs> let us know if... Uh, Were well, you being hypnotised? It was well, like that. Yeah, I don't know. But, yeah, I often say something like, um, oh, do you know how much the boxes are in China? And then and the I'll, person will usually I'm say, going, I was Sorry? just talking oh. about the movie Top Gun. What the hell are you talking about? Like it's. <laughs> and then I say, yeah, the truck. It's like a glitch. China. It's just like a brain glitch. That's so Oh my god, I'm I'm like a I'm a robot. Yeah, it's it's like yeah, it's like the Matrix has just had an error and you're just like glitched out and yeah, it used to freak me out because I thought if this is what I'm seeing in the first few weeks of the dating you, what else is there to come? Like, I know. What are you covering up? Yeah, so it is a little bit weird. I understand but anyway it's uh it's just one of my beautiful quirks Look, and it's, yeah it's one of the it. great features that makes you a unique human being oh, and gives right. us more reason to love you and more fodder for the podcast yeah <laughs> yeah that's right if you were a normal straighty 180 this would be, be boring as hell exactly <laughs> yeah i'd live a normal life which would be nice but oh, well, you'd never know about the boxes in china would no you? well that's very helpful to know you know you still haven't answered me information about what's in those boxes in china i don't know but... hey big guest big guest boy big guest <laughs> are you kidding me what tell us more should we bring her in so we can do our intro to her I don't know. Did, nah. did you like doing that? Nah, or? let's just. It's always a nice pep up, though, to hear good things about yourself. That's but true. It's up to you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, who have we got, Grant? Oh, my gosh. Oh, am I bringing her in or not? Okay. Yep. Okay. Bring her in. Right. We must be three of the most indecisive people. <laughs> God. Wish that's such a Virgo thing. Shall I do it? I don't know. You tell me. What do you think? Am I doing the right thing? I don't know. Oh, my God, ladies and gentlemen, here she is, the star of stage and screen, Lucy Jurek is with us here. Yay! 
Is that what you – Is that do you introduce Shazzy to just the family every morning like that? Is yes. It, she had a really big – Kids oh, gather around, grab the Cocoa Pops. Please welcome one of your most most loved members of the family, Shazzy Denya. Yeah, yeah, and everyone claps. That's no, that is – you know, say like one of your most loved mums. Yeah. yeah. It's like, oh, yeah, thank you. Yeah. No, he doesn't say that. He goes, oh, mm. Oh, did you sleep all right? That was this morning, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, because yeah. I don't know. Are you happy? Because um, <laughs> I don't, you might want to tell your face. Um, I have a great morning face. Um, hey, mate, how are you? I'm so thrilled to be chatting to you guys. Oh, my God. What a lovely thing to do on a Tuesday afternoon. I know. Oh, my God. I'm glad, I've got, my cheeks are hurting. I'm so excited. Mate, you're, Me you're in Wicked. You're in Legally Blonde. You're, you're in uh, – we saw you in Shrek – uh, you, we've oh, seen you uh, as a judge on Australia's Got Talent, and now you're moving into the podcast space too, you little cutie. What are you I'm doing? Say, and you've seen me as a quaker. Same yes. You. <laughs> <laughs> yes, actually, we were only talking earlier about a nervous tick that Grant has that's quite embarrassing, and so we were going to ask you. So seeing as you've okay, gone right. there. Um, okay, so we we did do a, we do we, we were the, both the sound of a quokka, were mum and dad quokka in uh, a, a a movie called Daisy Quokka. Yeah, right? it was really well, cute little Australian animation. It was how much fun was that? So much fun! Like one of the greatest days of work of my life. We were just mucking about. You were being hilarious. I was just trying not to laugh too much because when I laugh, I get phlegmy, and then I can't <laughs> do the job that I'm meant to be doing. <laughs> I get phlegmy. Oh my god, I love that. <laughs> Well, um, Shazzy was talking about a, a, little, a little a tick that I have. When I get nervous and like excited when I'm doing like live television, I, my nervous energy has to go somewhere. And sometimes my hand will sort of tap <laughs> around my hip area, right, yeah. which is very close to my groin. No, he adjusts his pants. Okay, I adjust uh, my pants. Yeah, let's, yeah. Okay. Which yeah. could be easily confused with me playing with my genitals, right? Why, <laughs> but, but it's not exactly that. But Welcome I, to the podcast, Liz. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just I'm straight into it. it. Yeah. So what I do is I hold the bottom of my coat, so it just gives my hand something to hang on to, right? So it's so yeah. it's so it's yeah. innocuous. It's fine. It's all under control. Because many a person has noticed it, and they have often said to Grant, "It looks." Odd. So don't do it on live TV because it looks like you're readjusting yourself, but he doesn't even know he's doing it. So Shizzy wants to know, did you notice any nervous weird ticks that were like freaking you the hell out when we were doing our voiceover for Daisy Quokka? Yeah, I think that I you should be not. really honest. Are you too I nice, didn't notice Lizzie? it. I think maybe I'm just not observant enough. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> Or something. Well, we, <laughs> would, we were, you were you were sitting down sitting as well. next to each other yeah. too. So like I wasn't looking at you front on. So maybe maybe that. But I also think that I probably just maybe I just I'm the sort of person that doesn't notice that sort of thing. Yeah, thank God. <laughs> and now all the kids who are, who listen to this podcast who are there's like watching the movie, there's no they're kids all going listening oh, to this Grant, podcast. We've got this horrible. <laughs> okay, it was, I've always wanted to. This is so weird how the universe works. I literally had said a week earlier, you know what I'd really love to do? I'd love to voice an animated mm. film. That What a dream come true. To have that kind of legacy of a, a film that your kids can watch that you mm. were in and you did the voiceover of. And I literally, out of nowhere, from an organisation I've never heard of or had nothing to do with, emailed, just said, hey, we're doing a thing. Do you want to be in it? Mm. How's that? <laughs> the crap out of that grant you just secreted the crap out of it like you couldn't you, what else what else do you you should quickly like just get that vibe mm. and just ask for a whole bunch of other stuff that yeah you i know that's i what... really love a red ferrari um <laughs> can we get something like that we can eat or something tangible not a red ferrari no it was so it was so yeah it was very powerful and and you loved the whole process, didn't you? Have you done, Lucy, have you done a, um, like an animation voice before? I don't think so. <laughs> I yeah. want to say no, but, you know, mm. also sometimes you just, I occasionally sort of shoot myself in the foot where I go, no, I've never done that. And then somebody's like, you actually have done that like <laughs> twice before. But I don't think I have. Um, it was such a dream come true. And it was such a sweet, and also, like, I love quokkas. Mm. I um, grew up in Western Australia and... Like I've always loved animated film. I've always dreamt of being maybe a voice of something in an animated series or something. Um, 
Yeah, and like I got married on Ronest Island, so I had quokkas oh, at my wedding. Oh, my yeah. God. That's so um, magical, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So, and I just have always had a real affinity. Like growing up in the 80s, you were allowed to feed the quokkas whatever you wanted. Like it was anything goes. <laughs> Here, have a Mars bar. Yeah. Have a cigarette. Six days, not, <laughs> yeah. not to do, do you want a shot of bourbon? <laughs> Uh, it was generally the things you didn't want to eat, like lettuce and stuff that they were probably <laughs> fine with. But um, <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, um, yeah, it was like that was such a big part of my childhood because I always we went to Rotnest, my like it's my favorite place on earth, and we is that noisy? I'm just gonna close this door just in case. And she's um, just left us now. Um, <laughs> when was the last time we saw Lucy Jura? <laughs> Um, so yeah, so the fact that we were playing quackers was just such a um a special thing on top of the fact that and that we had just had so much fun. Grant was mm. being hilarious and we were kind of just allowed to go for it. Like there were mm. there were very few boundaries. Like they were like, oh why don't you yeah, just try whatever you want. We like they'd get you know, we had a script and whatnot, but we were allowed to really have a have a bit of a we were impro. like little kids. We were so excited. It's like it's you yeah, were so nervous. It's like too, a couple going of kids down. have been just given the keys to their parents' car, and they're like, "I can't believe we're doing this." You know, are we doing this? Are we doing this? And it, yeah, we were sort of experimenting. Like we just we just go, we try this, and then we go, we d- we turn it up to eleven, and yeah, it was really it was a joyous, a really joyous. And experience. it really worked. It really worked well having you two in that role playing around, like in those roles well, playing I, around. I genuinely say this with love, and I'm including in this that I feel like Grant and I are a bit quackers as humans. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Th- I kind of like quacker humans. It's so cute. Well, they're famous for smiling, right? That was Someone took a photo once and you take a photo of a quacker and they genuinely look like they're, they're smiling all the time and that's kind of my job, you know. I was the smiley guy on television, you know, yeah, doing true. game shows and everything. So you're right and I'm a small little marsupial. We like to hop around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is it true that they throw their babies at you if they're terrified? <laughs> Somebody I told me. recently too, Shazzy, but yeah. I don't, I've never seen that. Like they do seem very nice with their children. Yeah. I'm not sure. <laughs> Very, very nice, nice with their children. <laughs> it was such Take a rare, my child. I Take think your child. sister told me that. Yeah, it's the fact right. about quarkers. It's so strange. And the other, I reckon that's an urban myth, but I could be wrong. The other no, day, no. my kids and I were watching TV, and you popped up on like an old movie where you were, oh. um, you were in it with Hamish Blake, and there was somebody oh. else. It was like, yeah, that was now and Honey, Portia de Rossi, yes. Yeah, Robin Butler. It was that was such a joyful experience. Um, it was just one of those like um, out of the blue amazing things. And it was that was the first time I met Robin Butler and Wayne Hope, who are such influential people in my life. Like I look to them as they're just such kind, hardworking people who always have the best at heart, you know. And they run mm. and it was an incredible set to be on because the film was called Now I'd Honey, um, and Robin had written it and Wayne directed it and Robin starred in it um and Robin myself and Portia Drossi played sisters yes. and it was we got on like a house on fire and Hamish and I played fiancés we played vets um and we were kind of the awkward like it was a story like it was a Hollywood Lucy Fry who's absolutely gorgeous inside and out played this sort of young um Hollywood star but from Australia and they came back and it, it's a family fr- friendly film um but yeah, it was it was funny and it was really it was so nice being around Hamish Blake because I've been a huge fan of his. Um, like I'd I used to I used to plan flights around being home to listen to he and a- Andy on the radio. I just love oh, wow. <laughs> their radio show. And um and I've since become friends with Zoe Foster Blake and um they're just such you know, they're exactly what you hope for and more. They're like you guys, like mm. they're just such kind, nice people. And we were there and obviously Portia is a big star and, um, you know, people were very excited to see her. But they were equally, if not more, excited to see Hamish. And he was just like, he was, <laughs> I, the, the way that he was like, I know, this is like, I was like, wow, people like, wow, this must happen to you all the time, obviously. And he's like, yeah, like he was still kind of flabbergasted that, you know that it was happening and it was just so kind of lo- lo- lovely and and fun like we were um there were lots of kids on set or there were some kids on set and so he'd always be making things into a game like all right here's a block of chocolate let's guess how much sodium's in it like- <laughs> <laughs> oh, i love that i was just so surprised you have done so many yeah, it's been things. an incredible career like we've got george with us who um Hi, George. Hey, Hi, George. Lucy. Yeah. I've been 
said hello properly because I wasn't sure if we were allowed to. That's fine. No, I think we've been given permission now. I'm the uh, executive <laughs> producer of the podcast. I uh, love hanging out with the guys. Love but you. the way you think of Hamish is the way I kind of uh, think of you, and I'm trying to do this in a non-creepy way, but I've seen you in most of your musicals. I'm a musical theatre nerd, and oh, it's uh, pretty wild to be chatting with you. Oh, that's so nice. Thank you so much. That means just the world to me. And um, I'll go now. Thank you. <laughs> George is being humble. Uh, he's he played is. the lead in many a musical here in the Central West. We live in Bathurst and mm. he's a bit of a uh, a bit of a gun around these parts. Uh, what, what kind of that, roles have you what, had, George? Yeah. Oh, I, I did play Jesus in Jesus Christ Superstar. Was I was bigger. a lead in um, Pirates of Penzance. I played um, Galileo in We Will Rock You and... Oh. Um, yeah, just uh, I lived and breathed it. And I was going to go and study at the um, Western Australia Performing Arts School. Yeah. Then COVID hit and all those things happened. And I've, yeah. you know, ended up in media and radio and podcasting. But uh, I, I'd love to ask you, because there's a lot of people who are super duper fans of, you know, the Australian musical theatre scene. I've got somebody who works in it um, who I'm friends with and said there's a few there's a few kind of creepy people out there that go to every single show and wait at the backstage door. Do you, do you have to be wary of that? Do you have a bodyguard? Do you have... <laughs> You might. You sound like you might be yeah, one of them, like George. It's you. <laughs> when you say you know someone, it's you. <laughs> yeah, Weird. I'm talking about myself, Lucy. Yeah, are you saying that I should get a bodyguard? <laughs> Potentially, no. <laughs> um, look, when I did Wicked, that was probably the most of that kind of thing. And I, at the time, I originally thought it was because we had Anthony Kalia was in the show, and he had some super fans. Mm. Like the first week we did we were in the theatre for Wicked like 15 years ago, somebody just sent a cake with his face on it to stage door. <laughs> we were all like, cool, like what? <laughs> what is happening? What? And he had some super fans and, and I think that was a bit of a gateway. But I also think that maybe Wicked was that sort of show um, that did encourage encourage that. And, and like 99% of the time it was um, really nice and people were being like lovely and, um, you know, it's only like I had one bad experience and it was mostly because my nana was passing away and like that day and my um my sister had called me and she was really upset and so I was going to see her and I was trying to get out it was a Sunday so we'd finished our eighth show for the week and this one lady kept going what are you doing after wicked and I was like at stage door and I was like what what like I'm not I'm just doing wicked like at this stage I was sort of halfway through four and a half years of wicked and um she she just kept pressing me like what no answer me and I don't know why she just wanted to keep badgering me and in the end I just burst into tears like my nana's dying I have to go and I like ran away and I was like well that was like that was a bizarre thing but I don't know I don't know if the lady was drunk I'm not really sure what happened but apart from like the one-off scenario where that kind of thing happens where people just um have their own agenda Mostly people just had a really nice time and enjoyed the show. And I, I also am a musical theatre fan too, so I get it. Like I, I feel the exact same way. Um, I remember going to see Wicked actually in London and my friend Helen Dallimore was playing Glinda and she'd said, oh, come and meet Adina Manzel. And so I met Adina Manzel, but I was oh like, I just God. didn't have anything to say to her. I just couldn't. <laughs> Did you say, <laughs> let, it, let it go? I love you. Like, <laughs> so, I, I totally get it. And I'm honoured that when if I'm in the position ever to be at the receiving end of it. Yeah. Oh, that Thank is you. just so nuts. Did you just say that you'd been doing it for four yeah. and a half years? I nearly just learnt. How many shows is that? I did 1,300 shows. Get uh, stuffed. <laughs> Holy <laughs> Press the sound effect. What sound effect? Scary. Like- oh. No, that's the wrong sound effect. It did not work. <laughs> that's a lot. How do oh. you... Oh, how do oh you, my God. See, I have the utmost respect for what you do on stage. Like I can command a grand final as a TV host and have that kind of pressure of every moving piece is in your hands and you're responsible for making sure it all happens smoothly with the right amount of energy, the right, right amount of gravitas, the right amount of, you know, drama and, and theatrics. But it's it's nothing like... When you are on stage and, and, and committing all of that to memory and delivering the most powerful, passionate performance night after night, I don't know how you do it. And the idea of it terrifies me, absolutely terrifies me. What? You, know, do you, you could do it, Grant. Like, I, I really think it's like, it's just a 
a different length of focus. Like I've been on set with you before when you've been hosting a show that I've been like a guest on and I've watched you just do like hours. And it, and by the time my episode rolls around, you've already filmed however many episodes that day and you'll do like a 15, 16, 17 hour day or something. And you're on that whole time. Whereas in musical theater, it's just chopped up. Like it's the same. It's like that hectic focus, but for like three hours at a time and then you have the rest <laughs> and then you get up and it is hectic. Like when you're doing the three hours, it's like, you know, you're not going to do anything else in that three hours, but three or four hours or whatever, however long it is. If you're in late me, it's like seven hours. No, <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, it, you know, I think it's just a, a, and you get used to like anything. You just get used to that, that focus. And also I think, um, like when I say four and a half years, it was four and a half years split over time. So I did like 15 months in Melbourne and then two weeks off and then 15 months in Sydney and then three months off and then three months in Brisbane. Like it, it, it was sort of broken up oh, by the time. I'm glad to have those two weeks off in between. Oh, my God. Oh my God. The, how, do you, how do you maintain? Look, again, Family. It's, uh, I appreciate the fact that you said those kind things, but I've got many pieces available to me that I can lean on to take carry the weight, whether it be another contestant like you, there's games that can kind of, you know, they – once they're off and away, I can step back a little bit. But when you're on stage and you, you, it's just you and possibly that other person, and you, and it's all on you. But how do you maintain um, an energy and a love of that show when it's so relentless and you're doing eight of them a week? How do you, towards the end of a leg, still have it in you to get out there and do it? Well. For one, like I, like George and I, we just love musical theatre. So it, that part of it is easy because I I have always loved it. Ever since I first heard musical, a musical, I was like, oh my God, like it just is so a happy place for me. Um, so that part is kind of taken care of. And, um, and then, yes, it is, um, you know, the, you, you do sometimes feel tired or whatever. Um, and I remember once, I, I think it was when I was doing Legally Blonde and that was a really um, just in, um, physical show. Like it was the most I'd ever like danced in a show. And um, there was this one big number where I played Elle Woods and Elle Woods in the film, if you know the film and not the musical, she she does this big video essay to get into Harvard. And in the musical, it's yeah. this big number, what you want, called what you want. And at the end of it, I'm doing all this like curry and I'm wearing a marching you know, band and I've had costume changes and it's, I dive through a p- picture and it's all so hectic. And then I have to sing. Um, <clears throat> And that is really like that's a roller coaster you just cannot get off. Like you just have to um just get on it and just commit. But I remember one day before I'm after a matinee and doing a second show for the day and saying to Chris, like, oh, I'm so tired. And he's like, Yeah, but imagine your audience. Like everybody has organized, they've organized their public transport, that all they where they're gonna park. And they said, All right, I'll meet you at this place and we'll have a coffee beforehand, or we'll go and have dinner. And they've been planning what they what are they gonna wear? Oh, I'm gonna come from work. So I have to like, you know, they've really planned everything around this and it's been something they've been looking forward to. Maybe they got given these tickets as a gift. And, you know, you know what it's like when you go in and you see something and it's amazing. You want to give that to that person and that's your responsibility. Um, and it's a real honour to have that responsibility. And so I think once you remember that, you're like, okay, hmm. let's do this. Like, And it's a real, you know, it's it's mostly so much fun. It's, it is, and you, and you do get, we call it being show fit. So um, my co-founder of the app that I work on, Hey Lemonade, um, my good friend Elise McCann is playing Donna in Mamma Mia and she's just at the end of their first week of rehearsals and she's like, wow, I'm so tired because she and I are at, moment, at the moment a working day is, you know, on laptops. And I was like, yeah, but you'll be show fit in a heartbeat. Like, you know, hmm. she's up singing and dancing to ABBA and stuff all the time. And I was like, within, just don't forget, like within a week or two, your body goes, oh, yeah, okay, this is what we're doing, hmm. you know, like anything. Where did you? To- it's so yeah. nice to hear you talk in those terms so generous about how you respect the audience and knowing that <clears throat> without, yeah, beautiful. without them being there, you wouldn't have a career. Without them being there, you wouldn't have these opportunities. You wouldn't get to live out these dreams. And you, re- you remind yourself of that constantly. And I, I feel similar when I make TV shows. I feel it's my obligation to give them absolutely every ounce of my being to try and make them laugh, give them a good time, entertain them, take their mind off their troubles. And I feel that's a very... You know, whilst not an important part of life, it's important to me. Uh, and it's nice to hear you do that as well. Where did you get your work ethic from? Like, where did you learn the foundations of being respectful, appreciating on these opportunities? Like, I see you work, you are relentless and your schedule is is crazy, but you always turn up, 
you give it everything, you're organized, you're so joyous, you appreciate everything that's been handed to you. Where did these early foundations of what kind of work ethic will I have? What, what kind of approach will I have towards my career? Where did you learn learn these? Well, thank you for saying all those nice things. And can I just quickly say, I do think what you do is important when you said, oh, it's not important. Like, you know, what, and you have such a gift that I think that, yeah, it's amazing to watch you, how you work. Like I I remember the last time when we were on, what was the show? Anyway, Celebrity Name celebrity, Game. Celebrity, was celebrity it? Name Game, I think game it was. Game. Yep. Yes. Yeah. And I was just watching you just like fire off things and kind of turn the scene within the scene of, and, you know, keep people on their toes and keep, and it was so impressive to watch. And I was like, wow, you know, you, you don't see that very often. Like I've had the luxury of working with Hamish Blake, yourself and like Bert Newton. And there's, there's not, and, and, you know, there, I'm sure of course there's a few more people, but like it's such a specific skill that you have and that you've obviously honed over so many years. And I think pardon the pun, but you know, we don't want to take it for granted. <laughs> <laughs> And what you do is really amazing. Anyway, I just wanted to say that. Um, work ethic, I think my my both my parents have like amazing work ethics and just um, super <laughs> busy. We just are a family who like being busy almost to our detriment. Like my dad is um, currently, yeah, he's still working really long hours internationally and thinks he is in charge of various oil rigs and stuff. He does um, that kind of work and he always has. Like he's got incredible uh, he has worked super duper hard and I've sort of watched him my whole life. And my mom similarly has worked super duper hard raising I'm one of three girls and dad was away a lot when we were growing up. And um, she just has always been amazing. She also worked as a um, primary school teacher for a lot of that time and um, just has, yeah, it is always is just trying her hardest. Like my, you, you couldn't fault my parents for for trying as hard as they possibly could, and I just really um, respect that and and want to be like that. And my granddad, um, my mom's dad, he just had, and I think his was like an innate. He passed away like at the start of COVID. I was lucky enough. I was in Shrek and, um, of course, the theatre all just were closed overnight and so I was lucky enough to go and say goodbye to him before he passed away. But he um, he just had a real innate sense of gratitude and, like, he would look at a flower, like just a tiny little flower like, that was probably a weed on the side of the road and he'd be like, look at that, like, that's nature. Like, isn't that incredible? Like, he just had this sort of sense of wonder. And I, I think he just naturally had that, which I think is so lucky in a way um, And because he had, like, quite a tough upbringing and he and my grandma who was also amazing had brought um, my mom and her siblings from South Africa with like no money to Perth and um, you know they really had to start again and and but he always look, he'd always say like can you believe how lucky we are look at this woman he'd always say to my grandma <laughs> they um they lived together in a nursing home until the last sort of couple of years and then granddad passed and then my grandma passed he'd say can you believe isn't she the most beautiful woman you've ever seen like he would just be almost going purple in the face just trying to express how lucky he felt um and I don't think that uh I've gotten I'm a relatively naturally optimistic person but like definitely face adversity as we all do and just day-to-day stress that can get you down and so I've always and and I've sort of been conscious of feeling you know just a bit blur sometimes from when I was a kid and I used to look at granddad and think how do you do that like and so I think I've kind of cultivated techniques that help me and one of which is the gratitude and sometimes I like don't feel like doing it but that's usually the time that like writing down what I'm grateful for and that sort of thing has been the thing that's definitely gotten me out of darker days and darker times and um yeah and I I I don't think my granddad did that as kind of on purpose um he sort of just did that but but I've tried to emanate that and replicate that kind of thing in my life to be more like him so I guess I was just lucky I just had people around me who've got good coping techniques and I've tried to just emulate them I can't imagine you having down sorry I was about to say you've got like a really beaming bright aura like it's just like buzzing and yeah um yeah I can't imagine you having you guys I can't imagine you having a low day either. No, is that is, is, you, you, you? It feels like when we when we're in your presence, you elevate everyone. Like everyone gets brought up by your golden glow. Yeah, and that's what I was wondering. Is that part of the reason why you started Hey Lemonade? Yeah, I also hey, want to plug Hey Lemonade. Yeah, thank you, Shazzy. Um, definitely, Hey Lemonade is like it's a culmination. So Elise McCann, who's my co-founder and um, 
good good friend, but she and I have been working super hard on Hey Lemonade now for a long time. And she's a genius. Like she's an actual bona fide genius. She's one of these people who, um, you know, she just happened to do a law degree at the same time as working in musical theatre. She's she's her the her brain can compartmentalize in ways that I just can't. And she's so fast. Um, her brain is works so quickly and so thoroughly. She's she's amazing. Um, but she and I've been wanting. She's so Elise. Um played Miss Honey in Matilda when Matilda was in Australia and she's currently playing Donna in Mamma Mia and um, works in musical theatre. We've been friends for a really long time and we've been wanting to work together on something and I had had this kind of knockabout idea, like not what it is now, but like started to think about, you know, I was finding times really tough with COVID, you know, like I said before, like Chris and I both work in the entertainment industry and it, all the theatres and everything were close for such a long time and trying to support our little family. And Elise was similarly going through a tough time. She was um, living and working in New York. She was actually working for Sarah Jessica Parker's company and um, I had to come home. Her mum was going through cancer treatment and she was helping her mum and her mum's done really well. She's come out the other side of it really well, but we were both sort of having a hard time. And I'm the sort of person that, you know, I don't want to, for better or worse, burden people when I'm feeling down or blur or whatever and so I often google my symptoms of what I'm feeling <laughs> really specific thing um like for instance sort of a few months earlier I'd been googling like googling um overtired mother working expressing milk <laughs> like really specific things and ended up getting all of these um like beyond blue and lifeline and these amazing lines but I thought I'm not I don't feel suicidal I feel really overwhelmed and like I can't I'm really I'm crying and I'm really upset but um, I just need someone to help me kind of pull it together. And I ended up getting this maternal health nurse, this like battle axe of a woman who was just <laughs> like, how many times are you expressing? And I was like, uh, you know, in the morning and then I'm, I'm before I go to work and then when I'm at work, I, you know, in my rehearsal, I'll quickly um, zip out and, and then I draw my lunch bag and she's like, whoa, whoa, that is, don't do that. Like, that's crazy. Like, you know, if you feel the need, you can express once a day, but I'm telling you, don't do that. You're going to run yourself into the ground and that's not going to be good for anyone. And it was just this super pragmatic advice. You know, when you sometimes just want someone to tell you what to do mm. and everyone's always like, oh, I don't want to tell you what to do. I'm like, no, tell me what to do. Like, <laughs> I'm really desperate. And, um, and so not that we're saying we'll tell you what to do, but that's, I think that a lot of those kind of experiences were, and Elise had similar experiences and we had, um, we both had found ourselves in COVID on the meditation and wellness apps. Um, we both had found ourselves doing a Deepak Chopra 21 day of abundance meditation and course. And I was like, making lunches and changing nappies and listening to my airpods and thinking oh this is not how I meant to be doing this I'm pretty sure I'm not closing my eyes and I think I'm doing it wrong and Elise is the same and we we're both not always responding to the voice and we sort of we didn't it was like requiring this time that we didn't really have and we we're both like yeah see I just we went for a walk and we had a chat and we're like see we just need like a quick chat with a friend to sort of nip a small stress in the bud before it cycle becomes this much bigger thing and then you start rolling in all these other issues in your life and, you know, you kind of just need a circuit breaker. And so we started working. That's sort of the genesis of Hey Lemonade and it started to become what it is today, which is like three to four-minute pep talks. Um, and they're all written by amazing Australian writers, but every step of the way guided by psychologists. So everything's scientifically sound and tested with the CSIRO to great success and, um yeah, and it's become this great thing that we're now building out a high school version as well um, for, and, you know, it's been really interesting to do some focus groups with what high school students need. And both Elise and I have realised how far away from high school we now are. You know, you still go, <laughs> yeah, I was in high school, like, wasn't that well, it was actually a very long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and so it's been really inspiring and um, a great journey and a, like a massive learning curve for both of us. And we have a, a little team now that we work with. Um, but it's essentially just trying to turn those lemons into lemonade and with everyday stress. Um, and it's been, yeah, it's been really good. Like I have to listen. We both listened to, we listened to all of the talks a number of times throughout the whole process. Cause it's offered every, every talks offered in at least three different voices. So you can choose how you hear your support. So we have like Tony Armstrong and Maggie Beer and Benjamin Law, Jamila Rizvi, Zinzia Kenyo, a range of voices, Zoe Tarakis, um, Elise and I, and, um, but it's great because the talks do work. Like I just mm. uh, I have to remind myself to get in there and listen to them, but they really, um, 
they really do work. And often I'll be listening to a talk that's not about like, because they're really specific. You know, they're like, uh, we're writing one at the moment for can't stop scrolling or we've got stop procrastinating or um, guilty working parent antidote. So they're about specific situations. Um, so even if I'm listening to one that's not specifically for me, it's got like the science in there that just makes you feel better anyway. There's breath work and there's, um, you know, always I, I always forget that whatever feeling I'm feeling will pass. Mm. You know, you sometimes feel like in this real hard place and you think it's hard to imagine that you're ever going to get out of it and then all of a sudden one day you're just out of it and you're like oh you know you've you've probably done work along the way to get out of it but at the time you think that's never going to happen and and often it sort of tends to happen sort of naturally in some ways if you're lucky um and but yeah I think that that's always a nice reminder like this too shall pass and it's something that for some reason I just can't remember that it just doesn't stick I think when, you, when you're deep in something and you're just trying to survive, you kind of you block out all the other noise, don't you? Yeah. You used to use a meditation app when you travelled a lot. Yeah, I did, yeah. <clears throat> and sometimes to try and um, get your energy back up when you're doing you know, there's so many shows in a day, I'd try and yeah. take 20 minutes out to kind of restore a little. Um, yeah, yeah. God, that's what a noble service. Mm. Um, I, we feel silly for just telling um, we and bum jokes uh, on our podcast. <laughs> and you should start up an app called <laughs> Hey Coke. Very important. <laughs> Everything's got its place. <laughs> <laughs> We're like, wow, we talk about um, ghosts, um, the time Shezzy pooed herself in the cinema, um, you know, real big life changing <laughs> shit like that. Isn't that good? Because Isn't that great? Up. Yeah, for everybody else who's listening, they don't need to be reminded of that, Grant. It feels like that. That's my like. I was chatting to my mum actually about coming on and chatting to you guys today, and she was like, oh, "I love Shezzy Denya." I was like, "Me too." And she's like, "I love following." We were saying how much we love following you because you break down like everyday things that everybody's feeling and nobody's posting about, like mm. about you know kids having kids and all of that kind of the jazz that goes with that. And you know, of course, we all of course we're so lucky, and the kids are amazing and preface it with all of that but you know like the day-to-day stuff can be so hard but there's and still have somebody just go yeah oh that's hard yeah it's good mm. because sometimes you don't need someone to solve it you just need someone to be like acknowledge seen because somebody else is finding that hard we we have a very different approach to social media and i don't like it when she <laughs> writes my social media posts because she does not write like me so she's not allowed to anymore um you know for occasionally we'd like oh i don't have time to do this can you do this for me but now we we don't and her sense of humor is very different to mine but yes i think it was yesterday i nearly posted something and then you ended up posting it and i thought oh we've crossed over and it was was it was your post was i forgive myself for the things i did when i was just trying to survive ah yeah was the quote um it was by mel robbins wasn't it i I think so yeah yeah. because i saw that quote earlier in the day and i'm like and, I, and it kind of it lingered with on me for a, quite a while. I didn't repost it, but it, I sat on it and I was like, oh, yeah, that's a great way of looking because it's very easy to have shame and to punish yourself for moments in your life when you go, you know what, I probably could have reacted better. You did it a little earlier when you were talking about that woman who bailed you up outside the door. I can see that you st- that still hangs on you, right? And you're going, mm. oh, God, you're probably still going, oh, maybe I could have dealt with that differently. Yeah, totally. And you, you were just trying to survive that day, right? And, and that's a great mm, saying to go, great. we can't all be perfect. We're never going to be perfect. And in moments, sometimes we are just trying to survive and you're going to get it wrong or you're going to be a bit wobbly. Um, but, yeah, give yourself permission to forgive yourself for things that you did when you were just trying to survive is a very releasing um, oh. statement. Mm. Lovely, isn't it? And it's it's nice because once you give yourself that permission, then you start to think that of other people too because so often you're like, mm. oh, that person just cut me off in traffic or whatever. Probably they're having a super bad day yes. and so they're probably just trying to survive too. Like so much of our worst actions are exactly probably that. People are just trying their hardest to just keep putting one foot in front of the other. Mm. Um, it's, it's so nice. funny because every every single day I am just trying to survive this <laughs> life. Like, and people you say, How <laughs> and I'm not doing a very good job some days. I think I've got three eyelashes on. They've fallen out from stress this week from the school it's holidays. Literally just three. It's literally on three one on one eye, which won't really matter because Grant keeps trying to frame me out. 
Um, but I feel like most days I am just trying to hang on. And so it's so funny when I run into people and they say, thank you for putting up that video where you basically just took the piss out of, you know, something that happens to me every day. And I, and my, my thought process is something happens. It's really hard. You know, I can't even think of what it might be, but you know, say for instance, like sick kids or something, or sick kids, or you know, you clean the house and they just mess it up like straight away, yeah. and you're like, they're just, you know, the, there's no end in sight. And I think to myself, I would have loved when I was like a first time mum, I would have loved to have seen someone, you know, parading that and and showing, you know, hey, look, you can survive. This, you know, let's have a laugh Poke, at this poking moment. Poking fun at it to release that pressure. Yeah. yeah. But it's so strange that it's taken because I never would have had the guts to have posted something that wasn't perfect yes. up until I was 40 and all yes. because of, you know, of the work that you do with Hey Lemonade and, and you know, all that uplifting social media community. Um, yeah, it's, 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 it's a balance, isn't it? Like, cause you don't want to be fake, like, you, mm. you know, and you want to post about the good times. Cause I think I like what, like, I like, um, I love watching people, you know, have babies or great jobs or weddings on in, in social media. And that's the thing. Like, I love watching that. That's probably my favorite thing. But at the same time, it's nice to be balanced out with those daily things. Like I took my kids to the zoo on the weekend and Chris was out of town for a couple of days. And we'd like, you know, we had such a great time, but we'd, we went into this butterfly enclosure, which is really hot. They have to be hot so that the butterflies can exist. And it's it's really mm. beautiful. But like Holly just had it in her mind that she just wanted a butterfly to land. And we see, we'd seen a butterfly land on a couple of people and it was just this dream for her. But uh, we're honestly in there for like an hour and a half. And I was like, Paul, it's not going <laughs> to <laughs> You're like putting sugar on I'm your so hot. <laughs> I think as it is, I like might be perimenopausal thing. I was like, I am so we have to go. Like we can't live here forever. And Teddy was like tugging on me. I was like, Can you stop? Can you actually stop touching me for a minute? Because you know when you just be like, tapped out? Like, stop it. Just like and he was so bored. And so we got to the car and I was like, oh, we before we got to we couldn't get out, out of the zoo. Like it was really hard to find the exit. And I was like, oh, my God, we've been here since 9.30. It's like 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And so I, we walked past and I'm like, can we have something from the cafe? I was like, okay. I was like, oh, ironic. How funny. Let's get you a butterfly um, biscuit. So we got Polly butterfly biscuit. We thought that it was so funny. And then we got outside and there was a Mr. Whippy. They're like, please, can you have Mr. Whippy? And you know when you're just like, i have just given You're literally still eating a biscuit. Yeah, all right, we'll have a Mr. Whippy. Yeah. So we got a Mr. Whippy and I was like, I'll get a Mr. Whippy. I'm meant to be not having sugar because I've got gut issues. <laughs> so- <laughs> He got the Mr. Whippy and my ice cream just fell out and Teddy was crying and I was just like, wow, this is not a, this is hard. hard." (laughs) I think I'm having a mental breakdown. You kids belong in one of those enclosures. Now rack off. Look, because I can so imagine It's very hard sometimes, kids. Like sometimes it's just very hard. Anyway, we drove and Teddy, Teddy like fell asleep straight away and then I was like, I'm sorry, Polly, like. That was just a really hard moment. Like I feel like a lot of the time I'm just kind of having to apologise for like having a moment. And is that when the lady came up to you and go, what are you doing after Wicked? What are you doing after Wicked? (laughs) You go, piss off. I definitely would have cried. I definitely would have cried if that was that moment. That would have been funny if she was working at the butterfly enclosure (laughs) and she's like, don't land on her kid's arm. Yeah, she's rude, that woman. I don't know about you, but have you ever ever like been recognised while your kids are just losing their shit? That's the only time you get recognised. <laughs> that happened the other day at Bathurst Coles. I don't even, like I'm from Bathurst and this woman wanted a photo with me and meanwhile Sunday has opened up the chicken, right, that's in the, um, like on the side of the. Um, like the hot chook? Oh, I'm playing charades again. This is the, yeah, the hot chook. She'd opened up the chicken and pulled a leg out while it was, you know, on the. Ground? Oh, the um, the thing that moves. Like that. The Thank you. Belt. Yes, that's it. The and then grabbed a um, toy, remember, and ran out the store. Oh. And so this is at Coles, and I'm there. She's two. And she, then the woman's going, "Oh, I'm sorry, I don't quite. Uh, usually my daughter works this out, and I'm going, oh my my my, uh, my is it, uh, someone catch that child.' Yeah, and it was like so stressful, and I. 
I don't know how you do it. Oh, Good on you, Shezzy. That's a super hard moment in time. Like, just oh. it is hard. Like, uh, you know, like, but I, there's this quote that I keep coming back to, and it was, um, oh gosh, it, the it was on a Got Talent, and it was this beautiful singer. I've got to find her name actually, because then I'll um. I would feel terrible because she had very, um, she was very ill. She sang super beautifully and she, um, hang on, let me just God, I would not be able to be a judge on one of those shows if they came out with a bad backstory (laughs) and they were like, this person is very ill. I'd be like, Mm. gold buzzer. Yeah, every time. Every time. It's the 27th gold buzzer. (laughs) Actually, just quickly on that, like I was a judge on Australia's Got Talent for one season and the gold buzzer is active. So... (laughs) You know, like you have that irrational thought, like yeah. don't throw your keys off a very high building or whatever. Yeah. And it's like, just don't press the gold. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, that'd Especially be so tempting. Right in the middle of the desk and they are like, do not press the gold buzzer because if you do, the cannons, confetti cannons go off and it's very stressful, but it's very exciting. And it's an hour and a half cleanup as well. <laughs> exactly. See, and I, was, I was thinking if I was up on stage singing a song while, you know, doing a musical like you were doing, that I would be constantly going, don't burp mid-song. Don't burp <laughs> mid-song. Like, and especially if you have gut issues, was that ever coming well, in? Well, I didn't have the gut issues then, uh, um, but I... Yes, exactly. Like don't burp mid anything at the moment. Like I have to be really careful. <laughs> what's the craziest thing that's happened on stage? Like what's a, a live blooper that you think of straight away? Like a set piece falling or forgetting lines or spewing when on we, someone? Oh, there's so many. Um, when we did Wicked, there's this amazing number that, um, you know, Wicked will be coming, is coming back on with um, Courtney Monsma and Sheridan Anderson, who are going to be amazing. It's the Witches in Sydney uh, this year. There's this massive number called One Short Day in the Emerald City. And they're these big, like, kind of oompa loompa. They call them the wizard heads. Um, these massive sil- cylinder kind of egg-shaped things that people are in and operating and wearing these big, long shoes and stuff. Anyway, one of the guys in it fell over and, like, couldn't get back up, like, because it's an egg. So it just was rolling. <laughs> There's so much going on. And Gemma, Ricks and I, who were playing um, Alpha and um Glinda, we run down like one short day in the Emerald City and we saw Lockie Lockhart, who's this amazing performer, and he'd fallen over and he was like, guys, guys, and his feet were just doing this. And we, had to, we just had to look at him and we just kept going. Like it was so <laughs> terrible. We didn't help him at all. Eventually I think somebody had to pull him off and he was connected with a bicycle. It was like <laughs> There was so much going on and we didn't at all help him. Like we're the meanest. But we were like, if we do, I was I didn't know what any what the rest of the traffic was happening. I was like, maybe we'll create like a huge traffic accident on stage. But <laughs> so many things like that that happen that you just end up like the first time I ever was on a professional stage was in I I did Mamma Mia. I was in the ensemble of Mamma Mia and I understudied Sophie Ali and Lisa, the three young women when I was 20. And um they we did the song Under Attack in these ridiculous outfits. Like they were these big kind of shower cap things that were bright green with pink flowers and goggles and sort of swimsuits. And um and it's a raked stage, so it's on a bit of a slant. And they were like, you need to, and it's lots of like snaking around, holding on to different, the, the middles of other people. And they said to me, um, you've got to find David Harris's backside. And I was like, okay, like, I don't even know who David Harris is at this point. He's become a friend. <laughs> but, um, I had to find him, but I fell over and couldn't get back up. Like I just, you know, it's just like, I was literally doing this with my hands and feet in the air. And then I was like, and there's, smoke and UV lights and it was like I was like a dead cockroach on stage. <laughs> it was like my first time on stage ever. I was like, oh no, this is not going well. How not- do you keep singing through that moment? How do you not just crack up? I I just, I moment. was terrified. Like I was not finding it funny. I was like, oh, I'm gonna lose my job. Um but it was funny in hindsight <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. probably funny for the rest of- and that's the thing is like when it's not you that's made the mistake it's hilarious <laughs> yeah but when it's you, you're like, yeah. oh my gosh <laughs> i was i was chatting to todd mckinney about shrek uh because he plays lord farquad uh, yes. and he does a brilliant yes. job on the whole show's on his knees and he's super active as well like he's tearing around the whole stage yeah incredible lines great delivery so much fun and he was telling me about um the theory of the Shrek depression 
All right, and, uh, and, and see, let me, I'd like to get your opinion on this, but he was telling me how the hard part about being Shrek is the amount of you know, prosthetics that he has, has to have on is the hours leading up to that. Not only after, he can't do anything after the matinee, between the matinee and the show, he's kind of just got to lie there on his back. You guys are all sort of can tear around, go get some food, have some fun, have some laughs. He's just in his dressing room lying down on the ground. Yeah. And month after month of doing that, and not only that, he's got to put in a stellar performance, but then yeah. someone like Lord Farquhar comes along or Donkey gets all the laughs. So he's doing yeah. all the heavy lifting. He can't get out of his gear between shows and that weighs quite heavily on you. Yeah, it was pretty brutal. And he, um, like Ben Minge is, is such an amazing actor and he um, and he's such a nice guy. But he also really slipped very easily into the Scottish accent, the Shrek accent. So he'd just be like, I can't do a very good Scottish accent, but he'd be just in the Shrek head like, and it would just be the head because then he'd be in his regular shorts and T-shirt or whatever. He'd be like, kill me, kill me now. <laughs> <laughs> it's not- also, one of the funniest things I saw is in between shows, like, you know, you'd look at your phone and I would see him doing like, why is my phone recognising my face? I'm like, you are literally Shrek. Like, you do not look anything like <laughs> yourself. Of course your phone isn't going to recognise your face. Oh my but it was pretty brutal. Ben did such a good job. Um, but before I forget, on that tangent of before, when we were saying the lady's name was Jane. Oh, yes. Mark Skwensky. And her quote is, um, and she's since left us, but she was this amazing singer um, who was going through a really hard time and with her health. Um, and she just said, you can't wait until life isn't hard anymore before you decide to be happy. And I come back to that so often. You know, some days you just bumps. feel like it's really hard, but within the hard day, there's still lots of beautiful moments mm. and moments that you can find happiness even in the really tough times. I, I try to remember that because... Say that again. It's... You can't wait until life isn't hard anymore before you decide to be happy. Yeah, you're right. I guess when, when you're in struggle, you're like, okay, when all this clears, mm. then the load will lighten and yeah. I can be myself and happy again. You're right. And it's a When I get this forecast. job, I'll be happy again. That's right. When, when I lose this weight, I'll be really happy. If and we get do. our dream house or if we, yeah, exactly. That's given me goosebumps because there's so many people who I think – on their kind of deathbed and and I have heard somebody talk about this they often say I really regret not savoring every moment and yeah. you know it's like mm. you're always it, it's the journey it's not just the destination that just got real deep didn't it no it's nice though really nice I can't cry because I'll lose my three you lose your my last three <laughs> <laughs> that moment Sandy, in coals with the chicken and the lady and you're like oh my god but then there might be something really nice that happens like straight away and you don't want to like write the whole day off as yeah. like a bad day when actually it's just a nuanced every day is a nuanced day you're probably very rarely gonna have a day that's just like completely perfect mm. um you know, so it's important to like and highlight. That's so it. true. And that, you know, that woman, if she's listening, because she did say she loved the podcast, so hello, lady. Um, you know, I did afterwards I thought, well, that was not great because I had stains down the front of my shirt and a massive pimple, but it really made her day. <laughs> and so, I, you know, you have to be grateful for those moments. Yeah. Yeah, and if you can't be having a great day yourself, there is joy to be found in trying to improve someone else's day. It's so true. That yeah. is so true, isn't it? Mm. And that's like kind of the quickest way out, isn't it? If you're having a pretty rough day, if you can do something for someone else, mm. it's mm. like it sort of tricks. It's a bit of a trick, isn't it? Yeah, it it's is. like a hat. Yeah, it's like yeah. flips the switch on your central nervous system a little bit, doesn't mm. it? Hey, come back to your um your grandparents, that lovely story that you told us about them. Did they pass similarly like pretty close? They passed within two years of each other. Yeah. It, we, it was a sort of my, my poor grandma right at the end had really bad Alzheimer's and her last couple of years were not good. Um, and it looked it actually looked like she was maybe going to pass away like the week that my granddad died. Mm. And um, in a way, you know, we wanted her to live as long as we could, obviously, but um, it was, her last couple of years were really tough. And my mom and her sisters and her brother who... Um, you know, they, we all treasure, like, I think you, especially because we just lost my granddad, we really treasured those moments with grandma, but she was a 
quite a different person to she'd been this super stylish super smart woman she always wore fabulous outfits and played bridge and she had looked after my granddad was a draftsman she looked after his accounts and she was just really like amazing woman amazing matriarch of our family she'd brought five children up like um without any family support for, apart from my granddad who was working full-time and um she's yeah incredible person and yeah her last two years were were suffered it's with- such a horrible condition yeah alzheimer's isn't it i've got it on both sides so and i've seen all my grandparents actually have yeah have gone through yeah. that and uh yeah there is a gene family. so you, you can get tested for it now remember um chris hemsworth doing his tv show limitless discovered that he had the gene so hence he's he's wound down a little bit of his his movie making i would have to have the gene it's on <clears throat> all sides yeah 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 so Grant, is you really like, need to watch the notebook. What's and you the need early, to take notes. early signs of Alzheimer's? Is it forgetting to put all your eyelashes on? <laughs> is that the is that the is it the precursor? Definitely eyelash related. <laughs> oh, I've definitely got it. I'm pretty sure that's a scientific. Fact. I know. What about before? I'm like, you know, the thing, the thing, the oh, thing. Yeah. I've turned into my mum. The thing that that's, goes that moves. Yeah. <laughs> I do the same with my kids, like just call them the wrong name. And I'm like, oh, my God, I remember my mom doing that with all of us. Oh, no. So Did annoying. it make you – it used to make me angry that my mom couldn't even goddamn get my name right. I'm like, I'm your frigging child. How little do you care about me? If you, you start – she'd call me Gavin and Wayne, which is her brothers, and then she'd yeah. go through Craig, which was my dad, and then she'd eventually kind of land – on Grant, maybe after going through a couple of girls' names. <laughs> and yeah. I'm like, oh, my God. But now, like, we, we've also named all our kids starting with S's and we're like, oh, oh my that, God. You have really we're the dumb. Put a nail in your own coffin. Yeah, with that it was so hard. stupid. I find that we've called our dog is Taxi and our son is Teddy. And I just I never get that right. <laughs> Taxi. And just have to add to each other's names. Yeah, that's what I say. What did we have the other day? Smini, that's the dog. And then Monday, Slayla, like I'm they all, all over the place. They all just blend into yeah. a, like a, just a mush version of everyone's name in one. And then they wonder why I yell, you're not bloody listening. And they're like, who are you talking to? <laughs> I'm talking to Grant. Like, well, you have a point. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Lucy, oh, I've really enjoyed this chat. I feel like I could, you know, chat to you for days you're very uplifting um you've got a podcast we better give it a plug because if people want to hear more from you um it's called i love with lucy and it's just uh you have to come on my podcast um we just chat about the things that you love in life because like we've sort of said like there's a lot to get you down in life but there's also a lot to love and so i love going through and just chatting to people you know things that they loved when they were kids snack foods that they love you know what are they loving at the minute well what are you guys loving at the minute what would you have what's what at the moment is bringing you joy or just it doesn't and that's the thing it doesn't have to be your favorite thing in anything just but what is you know, um, I don't, this is really um, not uh, just say a it, big Grant. deal, uh, but yeah, <laughs> you know, I had roll-ups as a kid and, and my kids got roll-ups again the other day and the tattoos, that, have you seen the tattoos that come on the roll-ups that you can put on your tongue? Yeah. That, that, Wait, my kids get roll-ups and I didn't even know that was a thing. Yeah. It's, it's only some packets that yeah, have them. It blew my mind. Yeah. So you can kind of tattoo your tongue with like these prints that come in the roll-ups and I thought, wow, that's, uh, that's, that's come a long way. I remember really people fun. used to have roll-ups at school and I was so jealous. I remember I took like a potato once <laughs> like that had been cooked with salt and pepper. Oh, were you born in 1880? I don't know what was wrong with my parents now I'm thinking about it. Like, And then I also got sent to school with a slab of corned beef. Which <laughs> <laughs> Not on a sandwich or anything, just, just off the bone. Slab. <laughs> 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 She's in full Neanderthal style. <laughs> swapping food at school but they're not allowed to these days because everyone's got so many different allergies yeah, I was saying true. Holly said did you think you did you be able to you know were you able to swap food I was like yeah that was like the most fun thing to do all that bartering of like a Vegemite sandwich for a roll-up or whatever yeah. and the kids who had the roll-ups would want the more basic things like is that a whole grass is always green a sort of thing yeah um and there's me yeah. with my yeah. potato anyone <laughs> <laughs> anyone want to trade <laughs> yeah, Jessie, I'll have your potato <laughs> it's actually a really random thing to say. potato 
<laughs> and do you know what? I am so specific about my kids' lunch boxes. Like I pack that much food in there because there was so many Bathurst winters where it was freezing. And I remember sitting like trying to keep warm, trying to get on detention so you'd be in the classroom. George is nodding. You know how cold it gets. Know like, the feeling. Yeah. And freezing. if you're stuck there with just rice crackers and it's freezing outside and that's all you've got, that's pretty dismal. Yes. Yeah. And so like I put – like I put a week's worth of food into my kids' lunch boxes, and then they bring it home. Three thermoses. Like, yeah, I'm like, you haven't eaten anything, and they're like, Mum, our stomachs can't fit that much food. We don't want a kilo of corned beef anymore. <laughs> what? <laughs> In my day, I was given a raw potato and a potato peeler. But it's Count so- yourself lucky that you've got a little snack. And I remember it's so random how things from your childhood, like you plant, like I couldn't send my kids to school with bananas because I always had mushed bananas like oh, through my bag. Your bag. Yeah. And it's like every assignment I ever handed in had but like, bits of banana, <laughs> dried banana, <laughs> because I'd never <laughs> eat it. It was just so <laughs> yeah, and stuff. It was just things like that. Yeah, oh, roll ups. Yeah. yeah, I never had roll ups, but I remember chicken drummies at the canteen you know like those oh, like um, fried fried chicken like they probably yummy had drummies? no yummy drummies oh, yes they probably yeah, had no they chicken they were like a, a big nugget thing yeah it was wow i always used to like at our school canteen you could get with the sara lee chocolate cakes and and banana cakes oh, but like all the sara lee cakes that you'd get them and they would still be frozen and oh. i kind of <laughs> You're like, oh, I need a filling. <laughs> just take it. Like a cake and an ice cream all at once. <laughs> that is, that's really, we had like watermelon and I remember it was, I don't know, three slices for 10 cents, which was not a great deal. Um, that was the healthiest food that you could get. And then you'd have packets of chips. Mind you, I'm probably showing my age because canteens apparently now are very healthy. Well, I did canteen duty recently and it was one of the most stressful days of my life. Um <laughs> You didn't even take the money. Mate, oh, I had kids coming up to me <laughs> saying, I didn't get a thing in my thing. And I packed all of the lunches for all the kids. And so like some kids I'd forgotten chips and they're all coming up to me. I gave away that much food from kids because they realised if they came up and complained they, I, that they didn't have something in there, they were lying and I didn't know how to disprove them. So I just and everyone just was getting effectively two lots of lunches. So Love they, that, the grand Daniel loophole. Everyone's yeah. like, um, when, uh, to your kids, like, when's your dad coming back? Yeah. <laughs> Except <laughs> I was taking I was, the money was on the till. up by like seven-year-olds just all surrounding me. It looked, took me back to primary school where I, I was, you know, I was being bullied so I just was just handing food out randomly to everyone. I was on the till oh, though. Yeah. And you so get all our, up. <laughs> our IOUs were so long because people would come up and they'd say, hi, Scout's dad said I could have this. And I was like, who are you? I'm Scout's friend. And the Scout's like, that's not my friend. And I've already written down his IOU for his Zupa Dupa. This is the one I figured out. We should definitely never run a restaurant. That, that, was, <laughs> that was a big conclusion for me. <laughs> We should all got our skills, don't we? <laughs> hey, this has been so much fun. Thank it you, has. Lucy. I know um, it, this has meant a lot to George, um, having someone of your international calibre um, and esteem on this podcast. So thank you, George. Would you like to say your final farewell to one of your idols? <laughs> I would, yes, but I'll be at the backstage door. So I'll see you. <laughs> what are you doing after Wicked? <laughs> Actually, so, so probably will our daughter Sailor because she loves musical theatre as well, doesn't she? Yeah, she do does. you sing a lot? Can I just ask, do you sing like in the shower and when you're not being paid for it, do you do it for fun? I do these days because I haven't sung as much. Like I'm doing a musical called Midnight in the middle of the year in Melbourne. So I'll, I'll have a few months where I'm, you know, and so then when you are doing a musical, you're kind of resting your voice a bit. But when I'm not singing eight shows a week, um, I love to sing and, you know, it is, it is, it does bring such a lot of joy. You know, there's scientific studies that singing is so good for you, um, for your mental health. And so I sing a lot with my kids. They love, like, Teddy's favourite is Raw by Katy Perry. So oh, we sing a lot. We sing yes. some pop songs, but, yeah, they're really into Matilda. Yeah, we, we do. We sing quite a lot. Yeah. Love it. The That's Matilda but most of the time they're like, Mum, stop singing. I'm like, sometimes people pay me to do this. <laughs> I sell I sell out theatres. You could just sit down, little man. (laughs) Uh, Thank you so much for your time. We'll let you get back to your wonderful life, uh, and thank you for sharing your gift with all of us. It's such a pleasure to watch you on stage, and it's a pleasure to have you on our podcast. We love Lucy. All three of you. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a delight. It's been. You take care, sweetheart. 
Bye, guys. Have a lovely rest of your day. Bye. 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 Wow. George. Oh, wow. Crikey. (laughs) You all right, mate? Yeah, your eyes were like stars. Yeah. No, that was really nice. I I was just smiling the entire time. Very, very happy. She's such a bubbly human. Oh, she is. She's so beautiful. She's effervescent, isn't she? Yeah. Yeah, she just has this youthful joy for things. Mm. Yeah, which is really, really nice. Mm. Really nice. A lot like me in <laughs> the morning. And now it's just us three left. <laughs> yeah. uh, look at us crash. Look at really... our energy just die. <sighs> Real let down. <laughs> oh, that was good. No, she's, I yeah, really she's, like it. She's pretty special. Yeah. Um, right. Like where do you go after that? Yeah, well, I, I don't think, know. Uh, I think we just got to hang up. I'm I'm thinking w- could you do a um, a musical, do you think? We didn't um, really even ask her how long she has to stay away from home. I mean four and a half years Doing the same character? Could you, you know do what? that? Four and a half years? I don't know if I could. Uh, well, maybe. Well, you know what? If it's a really great musical and you're singing hits every night, it's a pretty great existence. But that's a big commitment, isn't it? I, I Would you be tempted just to do a little bit of like improvisation? S- you know, oh, like just would, break out you? of... Because that's what would happen, I think, to with my character. To try and keep character. it fresh for yourself. Oh, my God. I pity the other actors around you where they're all just trying to be professional and you're just like riffing. Riffing because you either I'm, forgot or you got bored. No, I'm not a selfish riffer. I just, like, no, say if somebody true. fell over, I would make a comment about that and just keep the show going. And yeah. Would you? Uh, I think, sorry, I think GD would be a fabulous genie in Aladdin. Oh, oh yeah. That, that, so of all the role. voices that'd and the big role. numbers, all comedy. The, the little monkey. <laughs> Abu. Oh, thank you. The non speaking <laughs> monkey. Wow. He goes, you view. <laughs> <laughs> Can you sit on someone's shoulder? Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. I, look, I think that would be that's, that's surely a bucket list thing, you know. To to but who played to have a ho- the energy of a whole theatre there, just loving the music and singing along, and that that's got to be a pretty addictive, powerful feeling. Yeah. Yeah. I, what if we got you a cameo in a musical that's touring in Australia at the moment? Just a little cameo, like a, a five mm. lines in a scene. Oh, yeah. Show bunny your nails. Yeah, you're well, you're making nervous. me nervous now, and now well, it's getting serious. He's been asked to uh, to be in a very well known, actually, two <laughs> musicals, haven't you? I ha- I have, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, what? Yeah. yeah. There's, Holy um, shit! Bit of news there, yeah. yeah. So he was asked to be in. Well, we, yeah, he was asked to be in one that's going to tour next year, which we don't think that he'll be able to do it. Oh, how about I just speak on your behalf? Yeah, yeah. you do mostly <laughs> anyway. Um, cause it's such a big commitment. Um, and then another one just popped up. See, you manifested that. You Gabby Bernsteined it. I did Gabby Bernstein it. And now I'm worried that if I don't say yes to it, that I'm now, I'm, I'm, you know, if, shouldn't you say yes to life if it, if it offers up what you have You can't manifested. say yes to those. Yeah, I know. That's the problem. But what I've what I have just learned recently is that you can go back to the universe and you can say, "Universe, thank you for for um, allowing this manifestation to you know to appear." And I I know that you're listening. However, can you give me a, you know another opportunity that will you know will actually work? It would, yeah, it would, it would sort of clashes with. Yeah. Some work commitment. Yeah, so it was like, oh. But, but the power is there. Mm. That's incredible. It'd be good fun, I reckon. I would pay so much money to see you in a musical. Well, the producers would be very happy to know that. <laughs> it's, it's, called, it's called Family Feud the Musical. That's, <laughs> <laughs> no. Survey says. No, they're big musicals. They're musicals that they you, are would, big you, ones, would, yeah. you would very much know. Uh, but you really want to do Jesus Christ Superstar, don't you? Uh, You've said that I a love, lot. I love the music in Jesus Christ Superstar. I just, I love it. Yeah, mm. I really do. Because it's it's kind, it's rock and big themes, great music, so well written. Uh, and it was the first musical I ever saw. So it has that kind of, you know, imprint on you as well. Like it was, it was like, whoa, this is huge. I don't understand how, we should have asked Lucy. Rocky Horror would be I'm... fun. I reckon that'd be, a, that'd be a fun kind of a, a thing. Uh, yeah. Craig McPherson. No, Craig. What's his name? Craig McPherson is the head of news for Channel 7. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, Craig McLaughlin. McLaughlin. Yep. Yeah. No more words required there. <laughs> <laughs> Who else is in? Um, <laughs> Someone else has just picked that up. Shane Jacobson. I think yeah. he was in that one. 
Yep. Who, who's, who's got the gig now for um, Frank and Ferdinand? Donovan. Jason Donovan. Jason Donovan does. That's right. Oh, my God. He was my first tape. I got a tape of Kylie Minogue and Jason Donovan. <laughs> George is like, who? Tape. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what the? <laughs> it's not even Jason Donovan. It's the word it's like, tape. He goes, what is a tape? <laughs> Yeah, that's quite funny, isn't it? That's uh, that was I was eight. He played. He was Kylie Minogue's love interest in Neighbours. He doesn't even know who Kylie Minogue is. <laughs> yes, he does. No, I don't. No, he oh. doesn't. I'm actually looking up musicals 2024. Are you? <laughs> what's coming out? Yeah, what's coming out? Um, still looking. Still Where are looking. you looking this up, George? Just Ticketmaster. We've got Moulin Rouge. Oh, can you dance? Oh, yeah. You, I, you can I did dance, love the yeah. movie of that. Yeah. Can you? Can, can I dance? Can, Fuck. I know. Right? I know. Can, no, <laughs> tick tick boom. The spin-off from Rent, the musical. That's a great show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. Any others? <laughs> um, no, that's all. I've got I meant. So can far. you lift your legs real high? You got tight hips. You can't <laughs> do the Moulin Rouge dance. Tina Turner, the musical. No, it's not. Oh, I'm not playing Ike. the role of Ike. Ike. <laughs> Um, <laughs> you look like yeah. No, nah, anyway, or mate, was it? It wasn't next year. Was it? It was this year. Was it this year? One was this year. One is in the middle of this year, and the other one, the long period is um next is year. next year. Yeah. yeah, but it hasn't been announced yet, so maybe we don't. Oh, okay. Let's not go there. Yeah. Anyway, <sighs> but so this has been fun. It has not been ambiguous. Fun. Finish. Just drop that massive bombshell at the end and not really have. Right, that's okay though. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Uh, tune in to season. What well, this is season eight. Tune in to season ten for the big reveal <laughs> <laughs> coming yeah. soon. Yeah, oh, ten classic. weeks away. Oh, that was oh. fun. Thanks for listening, everyone. Thanks for listening. Go and enjoy Bye, your yes. day. Bye. See ya. It's all true. The podcast with Grant and Shezzy Denya. Bye.